Hello and welcome to a special episode of iBuzz. In today's episode, we will discuss the new Turkey and Pakistan collaboration on a TV, TV series. Turkey and Pakistan are set to co-produce co a television series on the life of Salahuddin Ayyubi, a revered Muslim general popularly known in the West as Saladin. Having welcomed the project offer from Pakistanis Ansari and Shah Films, producer Emre Kanuk, owner of Turkey's Akli Films, announced on Saturday that they have reached an agreement. To discuss this further, we have Round Film Director Javad Sharif with us. Javad, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Nasheen. So Javad, as a filmmaker, how do you see this sort of collaboration benefiting the Pakistani film industry exclusively? Uh, I think, uh, Nasheen, uh, this is uh, such an encouraging step, mm -hmm. uh, specifically for the local producers and local directors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more like uh, we have now new window of opportunities uh, uh, with, with Turkey and uh, 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 I mean, uh, specifically when uh, it comes to collaboration, mm -hmm. so it's more about uh, uh, you have to fill the gaps which we have in here in in the local industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I strongly feel that uh, we don't have that much technical expertise, mm -hmm. and uh, we don't have that uh, uh, that uh, mm -hmm. that uh, technical, uh, you know. Uh, uh, those technical crew, those mm -hmm. uh, those gear, those equipment, mm -hmm. and uh, which is required for uh, uh, such scale of the production and mm -hmm. uh, such scale of the series. But uh, collaborating with Turkey, mm -hmm. I think uh, we are going to fill those gaps, mm -hmm. and uh, it is going to help us uh, help the local industry as well. Great. Because once the local teams will collaborate with uh, uh, with with the with the production mm -hmm. teams in Turkey, they are going to learn uh, uh, those skills uh, they are going to fill those gaps and uh, they are going to eventually uh, they are going to uh, get, uh, get much get, improvements uh, get, are, are on the way this yeah. is what you mean yes right yes, yes. right and javad no matter how great initiatives like these are taken there there's always uh, some sort of resentment that lies in like the especially on the Pakistani side of the film industry. A few complaints from local artists and filmmakers. We have been, you know, experiencing the, this previously. Could you elaborate the reasons for this resentment? Uh, actually, uh, if you look at the complaints, it's uh, mostly from the uh, local, uh, I mean, the Pakistani artists. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, uh, so somehow the insecurity is there because uh, the local artists, they think like uh, uh, when we are going to collaborate with Tur either Turkey or with some other country, so they are going to take their space, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't agree with them. Uh, uh, I feel like uh, uh, basically, specifically the series mm -hmm. like this, we really need uh, we, we really need to collaborate. If, if mm -hmm. we will uh, try to uh, film in, in our setup, in our industry with the local infra infrastructure, uh, I doubt that we could pull that kind of results. Right. You know, uh, it requires a different level of expe uh, experience, expertise and, mm -hmm. and, and, and the team, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I strongly feel, unfortunately, uh, it's not about artists, it's about the technical uh, expertise which we lack uh, in this area. Right, right. Uh, and Javad, of course, the country is immense talent, but when it comes to collaboration, which areas would you, being a filmmaker, exclusively suggest that are required for collaboration in such projects for further improvements? Uh, Noshin, uh, basically, it's 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 uh, not just about. I feel like we have like a uh, lot of stories in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. You know, a uh, uh, lot of inspirational stories, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, I mean true stories, and then we have such a diversity in culture. Uh, if we look at the whole region from uh, Karakara Mountains to yes. the to the to the seas of Gawadar, you know we have the we have lot of diversity. So it's not about the landscape. It's not about the content and stories. It's more about uh, uh, the skill set uh, which we like. Unfortunately, our film industry. Uh, since it is, uh, we couldn't. I mean, get back on, you know, on on, on the line, mm -hmm. you know. So 
we don't have that experience even as filmmaker uh, mm-hmm. so i i i have been to uh, uh, different countries uh, on different projects mm-hmm. and whenever so i was in la and looking mm-hmm. at the sets it was i mean such a different exposure that mm-hmm. exposure i could never get in pakistan right. so we need that Exposure. Our local technical uh, team, either it's cinematographer, either it's uh, 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 visual effect artist, either mm-hmm. it's uh, on on location uh, uh, chroma extensions, and then there are I mean this whole uh, whole technical crew. I think mm-hmm. that is the most lacking part uh, on. on our end and uh, but i i strongly feel on other end mm-hmm. we are very good at storytelling we are good at scripts we are good in uh, you know even in our artists are uh, really mm-hmm. good if you look at our local uh, tv dramas and nowadays mm-hmm. if you look at web series you know we are Absolutely. pulling out i mean such, such an interesting and, content and and speaking uh, of have, which uh, jawad so far what we have learned is that the collaboration is between the actors there are, i mean there are going to be actors from both the countries but up until now uh, there is no co-writer or co-director that has been pronounced uh, uh, sorry, sorry announced from pakistan um so can this still be considered a collab where you know actors from pakistan are being taken to turkey even the entire filming will be done in turkey so can you consider this collaboration good enough for the improvements that you want to see in the pakistani film industry uh when we uh, so uh, so basically when we say collaboration you know mm-hmm. so we really want like it should not just be uh, between one department mm-hmm. or two departments should be it should be the both teams mm-hmm. so uh, studios from pakistan and uh, studio from turkey you know mm-hmm. so once both teams on uh, all the scales are going to mm-hmm. collaborate that's how i mean this collaboration is going to be more fruitful if if just turkey is going to produce the film for us uh, i don't consider that uh, mm-hmm. that that as and collaboration that's going to be an entirely Mo- turkish production yeah so that's going to be a turkish production and uh, i think it's not going to uh, benefit i mean uh, for 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 our beneficial for our mm-hmm. industry and specifically for our crews for our technical teams mm-hmm. so it's 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 just going to be a turkish production i it could be beneficial for our rds i mean they are going to watch the content they don't know i mean what what's the technicalities behind this content what is the process behind content and they are not interested like what is the team behind it you know yeah. so it's uh, yeah so for mm-hmm. rds i mean i think it's good it's another it's mm-hmm. going to be an another value addition mm-hmm. but looking at uh, the local crew local uh, local teams and the pakistani studios i don't feel until they collaborate on every scale it is going to be beneficial mm-hmm. otherwise i mean, unfortunately it's just going to be a turkish production mm-hmm. for us right right and jawad i would like to know your overall thoughts on the topic that has been chosen the subject is a biopic on a war hero from uh, the history so do you think it is going to be a good initiative initiative to begin with uh i think i mean uh, so basically it's like uh, uh after the uh, uh, the successful uh, run of the turkish play artagol mm-hmm. uh seems like like from commercial approach uh, from commercial mindset and commercial mm-hmm. approach uh, i think it's going to be good like uh, but i strongly feel we should bring like more stories from our, mm-hmm. our own people uh, uh, from our own uh, you know uh, i mean there are a lot of unsung heroes living yes. between us which are not recognized mm-hmm. yet you know either if you look look at i mean uh, i was reading a story the other day about some olympian mm-hmm. uh, who used to uh, i mean who, who who won a race and not right now he is uh, he is driving rickshaw on lahor roads you know mm-hmm. yeah. so we have lot of stories between us uh, who are totally uh, i mean unrecognized and uh i mean no one knows them anymore those are our heroes so i would suggest 
like we should uh, focus on those uh, stories as well looking at if we look overall uh, in the cinemas on other countries uh, i mean uh, you if you look at the stories most of the stories mm-hmm. which inspire people those are stories like uh, between them you know those mm-hmm. are stories from from their own uh, from their own soil so we need uh, stories from our own soil from our own people which could inspire uh, other people which could inspire youth and uh, i mean uh, it is going to be very i mean that's how we mm-hmm. can i mean develop an industry you know right and besides yes. uh, turkey and pakistan they have a history even before the partition and you know after the partition so there can be a collab- collaboration in terms of having you know heroes from both parts of the countries uh, but yes you're right that we need to focus on our unsung heroes rather than having you know uh, people from other countries uh, but I, again probably this is a good initiative to begin with like like you said that there is a huge fan following for Tungrul already so maybe they're targeting the same audience and it's going to work that way yeah i think so i mean uh, it's uh, i think it's good for maybe mm-hmm. for time being but it, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be a long term approach right know? absolutely so uh, yeah i think we should empower uh, our uh, our local technicians yes. we should empower our local filmmakers True. and the collaboration should be made uh, mm-hmm. uh, made such like both of the team could collaborate on each every level absolutely jawad it was wonderful having you thank you very much indeed for your time and discussion that was jawad sharif with his thoughts on the recent collaboration between turkish and pakistani film industry we'll be right after a quick short break stay tuned Welcome back. In this segment, we will be reviewing the latest release, The Tomorrow War. The world is stunned when a group of time travelers arrive from the year 2051 to deliver an urgent message. 30 years in the future, mankind is losing a global war against a deadly alien species. To review the movie, film critic Matt Capon joins us. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So, Matt, another alien movie with a lot of question marks and a lot of mysteries to solve. Your initial thoughts? I, by the end of this film, I was in, I was was emotional, I was in Mm -hmm. tears. Mm -hmm. Not because of the story, not because of the compelling narrative Mm -hmm. or the characters that drew me in. I was emotional because it is just so terrible. I could not believe (laughs) I sat through two hours of utter dross. Right, so that says it all, right? <laughs> yeah, it really, it, 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 it really, really does. I cannot honestly believe uh-huh. Amazon Prime paid $200 million Absolutely. for the rights to this film. <laughs> so according to some critics, the movie could have been easily a lot better if the makers had less inclination to compile uneven plots from similar movies. How would you like to comment on that? Absolutely. This film feels like it's um, a blind bake between the very good parts of the classic Paul Paul Verhoeven Starship Troopers and Interstellar. And it's taken Mm -hmm. the very best of those films, Mm -hmm. ignored it and produced this abomination on screen. That's (laughs) entirely an accurate description of what you get with The Tomorrow War. Right. And the immense expenses that are being spent on the CGI Uh, What are your thoughts? I mean, to me, the CGI looked a bit better. Superb stunts and uh, direction, of course. How's about you? I mean, what do you think of the editing, the direction, the stunts, and the entire CG? And uh, it says that, like you have mentioned, that Amazon has paid a hefty amount only on the CGI, let alone the rest of the movie. On first viewing, the CGI and the special effects are incredible. If you mm-hmm. take the film in isolation, it mm-hmm. does look incredible, but it's unimaginative. Mm-hmm. But if you dig a little bit deeper, it's riddled with continuity errors. Mm-hmm. There's one part in the film where you actually see where there's an escape on the back of a Jeep, mm-hmm. where the gun on the Jeep is firing, but it ran out of ammunition two minutes before mm-hmm. that. Yes. Um, if you look a little bit deeper, it's full of errors like this. It's such a shame. The film deserved so much better than what we got on screen. It really did. Right. And there are like a lot of scenes that remind you of a lot of old movies like Tremors, 
uh, World War Z, where some of the people are left behind, and then you know the 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 hero, he goes back to save them, and then you know, I mean, I mean this is a very common thing that they could have ignored, but they still brought it and made it a part of the movie, which absolutely became a disaster for the movie. So, what would you like to say about that? Well, you're quite right. It 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 pulls it pulls from all of the classic tropes of. Hollywood blockbusters, but yeah. does nothing with it. It's an un unimaginative retelling of a story mm -hmm. we've seen so much better. Independence Day, prime mm -hmm. example, with the very witty one-liners from Will Smith. Yeah. Chris Pratt isn't given the opportunity to let his let his acting mm -hmm. chops show. The most you get is the occasional curt eyebrow raise, and that's about mm -hmm. it. Yeah, and, and I would like to mention Chris Pratt seemed to be giving the same Guardians of the Galaxy vibes uh, throughout the movie. I mean, it didn't give any any different sort of performance. You, you could not feel that something different is coming from Chris Pratt. How would you like to comment on that? I think this Chris Pratt is a fantastic actor mm -hmm. and he has really sh he's really shone recently mm -hmm. with his work in the MCU. But this is not getting the best out of Chris Pratt. Yeah. He does not play a straight-laced science teacher who is a former army vet. You just don't believe it. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not believable. And you can see when they do attempt humor, the jokes just do not land. Mm -hmm. Right, and Matt, we got a pray movie for these reasons, that it promotes veterans. It had so many strong female characters and that there were too many people of colors. What do you think about that? I <laughs> Now, you see, yes, on one hand, it does promote the work, the value and the integrity of, of military veterans, absolutely, and they're a really integral part of society. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But there are better films out there that achieve yeah. this. Uh, the diversity um, within the film, you have to praise. But you can't help but look, at, look on the screen and simply go, you're going to die, you're going <laughs> to die, the, chef hat, the chef's hat's going to die. You, you okay. don't see any value to value to this diversity. It just seems to be an exercise in tick, spot, in tick boxing, I'm afraid. Right, right. And one more factor. The violence is short and the movie cuts away from it quickly to secure a PG-13 rating. Again, what, what are your thoughts about this? Lazy. It's, it's, <laughs> a, it's a lazy classification to try and get the maximum, uh, maximum mm -hmm. eyeballs on a film to draw people to the streaming service because ultimately mm -hmm. this is what the purpose of this film is. Mm -hmm. it's, a Chris, it's a Chris Pratt led film yeah. which is designed really to draw people to, sub, sub, uh, to subscribe to Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. There's nothing really else to say about it. Would you have gone and seen this in the film? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Would you have bought it as a Christmas present for someone mm -hmm. that you didn't like? Quite likely. Right. Absolutely. Um, uh, Matt, what are your thoughts on the current movies that are being made on like on the lines of uh, the Tomorrow War with like hefty amount, heavy budgets and the filmmakers, on the other hand, they know that it's COVID. People are not going much to cinemas. They did try to open the cinemas, but, you know, the, the attempt was almost a failure. Um, so most of the movie goers are preferring to stay back home and, you know, watch the movie on the digital platforms, the streaming platforms. Still, they're spending a lot of budget. So don't you think that filmmakers need to learn from their mistakes and, you know, come up with something less, you know, and give more? Yes, there needs to be, there needs to be compelling reasons to watch a film, be that watching mm -hmm. a film in the cinema or be that watching a film at home. What we've mm -hmm. seen really with the rise of streaming blockbusters, in some, res in some respects, when we were at the start of the pandemic, filmmakers mm -hmm. were seeing an opportunity to throw things at the wall and see if it mm -hmm. would stick. That's the tomorrow war. Yeah. What, you've really, what you really need are filmmakers to understand the wants and, need wants and needs of the audience have changed really, and that people want to watch a film, but in the, in the comfort of their own home. But it doesn't mean that you skimp on things like storyline, characters, and plot development. Right. And Matt, just in case, if they announce a part two, would you go for it? Would you, uh, I, mean, I mean, would you support the decision or would you just tell them as a film critic to just, you know, stop it right there and don't try? <laughs> If they, if, they, if they were to announce a Tomorrow War Part 2, a Volume 2, a Chapter 2, mm -hmm. I think it would be conclusive proof that there are a lot of unqualified people in the film and television mm -hmm. industry commissioning these, these yeah. sorts of absolutely appalling films. 
Absolutely. Uh, and about the plot, the story itself, they tried to, uh, you know, inculcate some emotions with a father and daughter kind of story. Um, do you think it was successful or the other way around? I really wanted it to be. I thought the idea was, I thought the idea was very, very clever. But again, Interstellar did it better. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it, 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 it's already, it's a path that's already been trodden by a much more, much more equipped and, and better film mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. I, it could have done so much more, but it failed. And not to spoil it for your viewers, mm -hmm. but by the, by the end of the film, you kind of saw the twists and turns coming, which left it even more unsatisfactory mm -hmm. for me as a viewer. Right, and Matt, what would you suggest for the movie writers who write such scripts or scripts for such action movies? Uh, in what areas do they need to work? Because, you know, same was the problem with the Army of Dead, and now we have the Tomorrow War. Uh, I mean, it's not coming up to the mark. Marvel has raised the bar, but then again, uh, Black Widow seem to have a lot of you know troubles with topping the charts with the same problem that the writing is not strong so what would you suggest to the writers of such movies it's a very interesting point because this is something that i think the tomorrow war really suffers from and it's his mm -hmm. biggest issue the director i have a lot of time for who directed the lego batman movie which mm -hmm. was an incredible romp a fantastic film lovely bubblegum movie yeah. The writer is known for very dark, sinister, criminally driven stories. Mm -hmm. they, th those two characters do not make good bedfellows. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for writers in these films to really have an idea of how it's going to look on screen. I'm sure if you spoke to the writer of The Tomorrow War, his vision for how it looked on screen would be incredibly different to what we saw on screen as the final product. Mm -hmm. Right. And Matt, last but not the least, how would you rate the movie according to your rate meter <laughs> I, <laughs> I think it would be disingenuous to say I enjoyed this film because, mm -hmm. because I think it's self-evident I did not. Um, but I think you do have... The, the, it's a very good cast mm -hmm. and they do try their best to keep this film going. J.K. Simmons doesn't really get enough screen time. Um, but out of five, I would have to give this a generous one and a half. And that's simply because I've yet to see a film that is worthy of zero out of five. Right, right. Matt, it was lovely reviewing this movie with you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks a lot for your time. That was Matt Capon with his brutally honest review on the latest release, The Tomorrow War. And that is it from today's episode. We hope you liked it. Don't forget to share your feedback on the social media link mentioned down below. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care and goodbye.